Hello, scumbags. I'm Andrew Fantasia, and I've got the high ground. Welcome to High Ground. Thanks for watching. As usual, if you like High Ground, if you like us, if you like the Rebel Scum Podcast Network, if you like RSPN Detours, do all the subscribing. Hit that plus uh, plus subscribe, hit that bell, whatever that bell's called. I think it's just called a bell. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon if you want cool exclusive content. It's like our normal content, but we all wear fake mustaches and tuxedos because... We, we just wanted to, to be swanky. Bang for your buck. We're here today to talk about the High Republic. It's the high ground of the High Republic. Two highs for the price of one. So Project Luminous was finally revealed to the public. Now for the longest, longest time, I thought Project Luminous was going to be the sequel to this. Remember this? I loved this. And it was made for the 40th anniversary of A New Hope. And this year is the 40th anniversary of Empire Strikes Back, so I thought, hey, maybe that's what Project Luminous is. It's going to be another 40 short stories by 40 authors that's just set during Empire. I still really hope they do that because this was a really fun book. But hey, what we got ain't half bad either. All right, so let's talk about this High Republic business. Let's get into the nitty gritty of it. So from what they have announced, High Republic is an interconnected multimedia series that is going to tell one complete story through a various array of mediums. Brock and James have brought this up many times before already, but this whole concept just takes me right back to 1996 or 7, I can't remember now, when Shadows of the Empire became a thing. That was just a glorious example of Star Wars using its multimedia aptitude to the nth degree. You got your book. You got your Steve Perry book that he wrote, Shadows of the Empire. That's your starting point. That's the, the, the fulcrum of everything. Hey, fulcrum, there's a Star Wars word. Then in the book, some things happen. And there's this guy named Dash Rendar. And he runs off and he leaves the book for a long time to go do some stuff. And you're like, where did Dash go? The answer? N64 had the answer. They tell you where Dash went, baby. You grab that controller and that joystick and you press start. And you are deciding where Dash goes. That was really cool. Then, guess who else shows up in that fulcrum novel? Boba Fett. Boba Fett's around very, very briefly, but you know Boba Fett is up to something. So what happens? Dark Horse Comics happens, and they give you a Boba Fett comic. You could have actually read that if you subscribed to Nintendo Power around that time, because they were cross-pollinating there. Nintendo had the game, so they said, hey, put your comic in our magazine, everybody's friends. In my opinion, Star Wars is the perfect perfect platform to do stuff like this because that has been their mojo since they came out. Star Wars has always been not just the movies. It's been toys, comics, books, temporary tattoos, ironing boards, car seats. It's been everything. There's probably a BB-8 baby car seat out there right now that somehow is canon. So then along comes Lucasfilm Story Group and Disney and they're like, hey, we got this Project Luminous thing. It's going to be really dope. And then they announce what it is and the other day we got our full slate just titles and very brief synopses and some author reveals as well there, there, there's juicy info in here but they give you just a taste so very quickly i'm just going to go over the five titles that were announced under the high republic banner okay so we've got the high republic light of the jedi by charles soul which is a novel the High Republic, A Test of Courage by Justina Ireland, which is a junior novel. The High Republic, Into the Dark by Claudia Gray, which is a young adult novel. Star Wars, The High Republic, very plain and simple title. A Marvel comic book series by Kavan Scott. And finally, Star Wars, The High Republic, Adventures, an IDW comic book series by Daniel Jose Older. Now there's a couple things I find really interesting about this. First and foremost, they were smart enough to try to cover as many bases as possible. We got five different things announced, and all five of them are in a somewhat different medium. A junior novel, a young adult novel, a straight-up regular adult novel, a comic book, and a young comic book. Everybody's getting a taste. No matter what kind of reading you like to do, there is going to be at least one High Republic thing that you're going to want. Personally, I know for sure that I'm grabbing that comic book, I'm grabbing that Claudia Gray young adult novel, and I'm grabbing that Charles Soule Light of the Jedi novel. All of those look 
fantastic. The next thing I find really interesting is that the authors here, some of them are playing against type, aren't they? The novel, the big adult novel, is being written by Charles Soule, who primarily up until this point has been a comic guy. Charles Soule has written arguably some of the best comics in the new Star Wars canon. I love the stuff he's been doing. He did the Lando comic. He did, I think he's doing the Kylo Ren comic. But here they have him doing a novel. On the flip side, Daniel Jose Olvera, whose only contribution to canon so far that I'm aware of has been the novel Last Shot. They have him doing a comic. The kid's comic, to be exact. Granted, I have read Last Shot. It is not amazing, so maybe they're testing him in different waters to see how he does there. I don't know. Now let's talk about these covers, these images that Story Group is throwing at us, because I gotta admit, I think they are beautiful. I love how bright and colorful they are. These colors remind me of Easter. You know, that the pastel Easter colors, the soft yellows, the mint green, the pink and purple and blue. It's very, very reminiscent of Easter. Like the, this whole, all these pictures with all these lightsabers, it looks like you just cracked open a bag of Cadbury mini eggs and just put lightsabers in every egg's hand. Eggs don't have hands, but you know what I'm trying to say. The cover for IDW Adventures, let's start with this. This looks like it's a work in progress. I don't think this is going to be the actual cover that just looks like concept art for two main characters. But hey, they look great. I love the capes. We haven't seen a good solid cape in Star Wars in a long time. Sorry, Kylo Ren, your cape was not, you know, the best. It was okay, but this is a cape. What that girl's wearing on the right, that's a cape. I, I, I love it. I love the way it looks. Moving on to the High Republic comic by Marvel, what we have here on the cover, again, I don't know if this is the final cover or not, but we have a peek at the new villains of the High Republic story there called the Nile. Uh, I am going to assume they are nihilistic because it's spelt the same way, and they've been described by Story Group as, quote, Space Vikings. Check this out, man. That looks really, really cool. I love the look. I love how, how their helmets are just these, these bestial helmets. Now, what's interesting to me is the Nile, we have not seen any art of them carrying lightsabers. All the Jedi we've seen with lightsabers, the Nile just have guns and other assorted implements of destruction. So if this is the case, if these guys truly are the main threat, how are they going to stand up to lightsabers? That's what I want to know. Because see that rifle that red guy's holding? All a Jedi has to do is cut that rifle in half, and the guy now has one less rifle. So... Do they have some kind of weaponry like Grievous's guards where they can stand up to a lightsaber? I can't wait to learn more about these Nile folk. And, you know, just between you and me, I know they're not adapting Knights of the Old Republic anytime soon, but my favorite character from the Knights of the Old Republic games was Darth Nihilus. This guy right here. Uh, and the naming is very similar. I don't know if they're going to do anything with Darth Nihilus, but uh, the name got me excited, so hey, you never know. Moving on to Justina Ireland's A Test of Courage. This is a junior novel. Uh, you can tell just from the art that it's a junior novel. It's uh, much uh, brighter, more vibrant art there. Now, this looks like a really cool picture. Like, I love that. And again, check out the guy in the background with the blue lightsaber. Dude's got a cape. He is rocking a cape. Now, I don't want to jump the gun here, but check out that droid in the bottom right corner. That looks a lot like M.E., who is the droid that works in Maz Kanata's castle. She is essentially Maz's uh, Chewbacca. She is the, the right-hand droid of Maz Kanata. In all the supplementary material, that droid is described as being pretty much as ancient, if not more ancient, than Maz herself. So could this be the very same droid? I don't see why not. I think that'd be a neat little connection. You could still have it all feel, you know, cohesive without having to have Skywalker characters in it. I also think it's cool that this girl in the front here, who looks like she's going to be our lead character, has green skin, which is neat. We haven't seen a, a good green-skinned character in Star Wars in a long time. And she's got a purple lightsaber. Now, I'm going to get more on this later, but it's nice to see somebody other than Windu rocking the purple. Next, let's move on to Into the Dark, the Claudia Gray young adult novel. Uh, now, I'm going to admit, of all the artwork we've gotten for High Republic, this is probably my least favorite. I don't think it's necessarily bad. It's just, I don't think it's a very dynamic cover. Like, this doesn't look like the final cover of a book. You know, it just looks like concept art. Beautiful concept art, though. 
Now this guy's name here, this Padawan out front with the green, it says his name is Wreath Silas. Great Star Wars sounding name. Not my favorite name of the new stuff though. There's an even better name that got announced. But uh, the summary of this one says that he's being sent from the cosmopolitan galactic capital of Coruscant, which means we're gonna see Coruscant again, to the undeveloped frontier. I'm on board and it's Claudia Gray, What's not to love? This book is going to be phenomenal. Last but certainly not least, we have Light of the Jedi by Charles Soule here. Uh, now this uh, front and center leading lady, uh, her name has been announced as Avar Chris, And that is my favorite Star Wars name that we've heard in this High Republic uh, announcement here. I think that's just such a cool name, Avar Chris. I already want a black series of this lady. Like, look how cool she is. She's rocking capes. Again, we got capes all over the place here. And they have these interesting white Jedi robes. Again, the color palette is just stunning that they've been using so much bright light and bright atmosphere to everything. She's got that tiara thing, which to me is very, very reminiscent of the Legends Old Republic stuff. I find that in a lot of the artwork for Old Republic characters in Legends, they were always wearing some kind of thing like that, like a tiara or a crown or something whether it was people like Ula Keldroma or Exar Kun or Nomi Sunrider, all those old school Legends characters, they all kind of rocked a similar style. And it's nice to see that the Jedi style itself, Jedi fashion has changed throughout the years. They're not wearing the big heavy brown robes that we saw in the prequel trilogy. This is, this is 400 years earlier. Fashion changes. Just look at the 80s and 90s and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And what's great about this cover is every single person is rocking a slightly different lightsaber. Avar Chris has this green one. Again, I'm so happy to see green. The dude behind her, the human guy, he's got a blue one. The Twi'lek in the background has a yellow one, which is great, which means he must be Ray's father. It's confirmed. You heard it here first. And then he got this Wookiee, who's got everybody very excited, particularly Brock. I'm 90% sure Brock is still running laps around the city of Toronto after seeing this image. He's got a blue one, but he's got a cross guard blue one. He's got a blue Kylo Ren cross guard lightsaber. My God, is that exciting. And once again, that right, like th th these are four black series that I already want. And I have no idea if I'm going to like any of these characters yet. I don't even know what they're doing, who they're fighting. If th this whole book could be about a picnic for all I know. I just want those four toys on my shelf. Like that's freaking gorgeous. All right, but enough gushing for one day. This, uh, this news of the High Republic is just a really neat addition to canon at the end of the day. I love how they're pulling all their resources together and trying to tell this one big story through all these different channels. I really hope that they take advantage of that. I really do. I hope they take advantage of it even more than Shadows of the Empire did. What do I mean by that? Well, plain and simple, in that Light of the Jedi book that I just showed you, let's say Avar Chris has a conversation with somebody named Maxwell. I don't know. And, and Maxwell is, uh, is a robot, is a droid, who's going to go work on this other ship. And uh, Maxwell leaves. We only see him in one chapter in Light of the Jedi. But Maxwell goes and works on a ship. And that adventure that Maxwell has is part of that IDW Junior comic that Daniel Jose Older is writing. That's the kind of cross mojo I want to see. And whatever those people are doing in that IDW comic, whatever mission they're on, let's say they have to find a, a, a pirate and ask him for information. That pirate is going to give them info and then they're going to radio uh, the people from Claudia Gray's Into the Dark thing and be like, hey, this pirate just told us that if you go to this planet, you're going to find this temple and it's going to have the MacGuffin we're looking for. And then the people in Claudia Gray's book are going to be like, okay, set course for that temple. Thanks, IDW characters. That's the world I want to live in. And when you have the talented writer's pool that these people have, I think it's only a matter of time until we get to that world. Speaking of the writer's pool, one last thing I want to go over before we cut to the chase here. And by cut to the chase, I mean, and James sent me this very interesting picture, which is the whiteboard in the writer's room during production on High Republic. Now, this whiteboard is split into three columns, which I think is really neat. Fiction, Star Wars, and Star Wars Wishes. And I think it's a really interesting thing to see what they have put into each of these columns. In fiction, they have put down the point form notes authentically lived in, surprise, diversity, actual ending, which is nice. Yeah, it took Star Wars 42 years to get to one of those. Feelings, relatable characters, sweeping slash epic, and humor. 
par for the course. That's why it's under the fiction category, because that is something that should be in every good work of fiction. Then we move on to the Star Wars column. Not pro-war. Yeah, makes sense. War is bad. We all know that. Droids. Mm-hmm. Scope. Uh, everybody uses mouthwash in Star Wars. Mythic. Very much so. Space and lightsaber battles. Yes, please. No single main character. I love this. The Force and Complicated Monsters. I think there was a 90s punk rock band called Complicated Monsters. If there wasn't, somebody missed out. Finally, Star Wars Wishes. So these are the things these writers want to see in Star Wars. High Republic. Okay, well, we know where that went. Relic Hunters. Mm hmm. Dr. Aphra's doing it. Luke and Lore Santeca did it, even though we're apparently never seeing that happen. University. Very cool. Again, we saw touches in Dr. Aphra. Dinosaurs. Look, in Mandalorian, they mentioned the legendary Mythosaur. So we know they were a thing. And for all we know, there's hundreds of thousands of planets out there. There's probably dinosaurs roaming around somewhere. Representation slash diversity. Uh, they had that in fiction too. Sure, of course. Arthurian legends. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take my money. Rival houses. This is interesting. Um, I, just for fun, uh, back in January, I started writing a spec script, a Star Wars spec script for a non-Skywalker Star Wars adventure. Just for fun, just for giggles, just as a writing experiment for myself. And I started toying with the concept of rival houses, which is what the whole script is based off of. So I'm just saying story group, if you need, if you're hiring, you know, I'm available. Sith Empire. Yeah, we all want to see what that looked like. Chaos Agents. I don't know what that is, but it sounds deadly. And finally, Splinter Group Force Wars. This is all incredible stuff. And the idea of making that whiteboard, of making those three columns, I think that was such a smart move on their part. It shows that these people are really trying to dig deep into their own craft, figure out the best methods to piece all this madness together. Um, I, As much as I loved the sequel trilogy, I did. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I think these people are putting more work into the storytelling effort than was put into those three movies, I'm just saying. Uh, but this is great. I'm excited. You should be excited too. High Republic is going to knock everybody's socks off. Just our socks if we're lucky. Probably other pieces of my clothing are going to be removed the more of these books I get my hands on. And August is uh, when we have to wait. We have to wait till August to get the first one. At least that's the only date that has been made concrete so far. That's okay. I'm still waiting for those trade paperbacks for the end of Star Wars Volume 1 and Kylo Ren. So I can wait. I'm good. But I'm so excited for High Republic. And if it works, which I'm sure it will, I'm also excited for what comes next. In the same way that the Mandalorian was the test run, right? It was the guinea pig. They wanted to see how does a Star Wars show on a streaming service work week by week. They proved it works. So now they can get really creative and go all out with Star Wars streaming shows. Now I want to see that happen here. How does a publishing multimedia big event like this work? We haven't really tackled something like this before. If it works the way I think it will, we're going to see a lot more of this happen. And that gets me super stoked. So let me know in the comments what you think about High Republic. Is it everything you dreamed of? Is it nothing that you dreamed of? Do you still want that uh, Empire Strikes Back from a certain point of view book? Because I know I do too. I'll take that as well. Why not? Anyway, that has been High Ground for the High Republic. I'm Andrew Fantasia. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. I'll see you around when I see you. I know I've been away from the live streams for a while, but I promise I'll be coming back to those once my work schedule stops getting all up in my grill. Until then, friends, enemies, everybody in between, may the force of others be with you. Hey scumbags, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.